All right, what's up guys? Welcome back to A21 Bravo. So I was gonna take some time today to explain how much it really helps the channel when you guys share the videos, but I'll, I'll save it for a different video. So we'll get right into it. Today we are going to be putting the T56 bell housing on the CD09 transmission with the Collins adapter. And let's get started. All right, so instead of showing the instructions, I think I'm just gonna read them as I'm doing the steps. So step one. Install your T56 slave cylinder on the adapter plate using the two 1 quarter by 20 hex flange head screws in the bolt bag. So in this section of the video, I was having some issues getting the adapter onto the bell housing. So I did not buy the bell housing from Collins with the kit. It was about $100 cheaper to get it from a different place, so I bought it separately. So I don't know if that had anything to do with it, but the double pins are not lining up inside of the 256 bell housing bell pin hole. So here I'm just taking some sandpaper and a drill. It's 180 grit sandpaper. Just trying to ring the holes out a little bit, going back and forth on both sides. And here I'm just using a, a Dremel a sandpaper wheel and going around the dull pins because they were kind of mushroomed out a little bit. So just kind of cleaning these things up and we'll try it again. All right, hit them things one last time with the sander. And that's a sand sandpaper bit in there. It's not a grinder. I think we're gonna send that thing. We're gonna go, we're gonna do it. All right. So now we'll jam these bolts in. Next, take the plastic bag filled with eight M10 by 1.5 hex flange head cap screws and fasten the Collins Performance Adapter Plate to the T56 bell housing. like it works a lot better and with any luck it won't be cracked on the other side Pretty good, no gaps. Took a little bit, but we got it. Okay, so we got the slave cylinder throw out bearing loosened up now, it just had the two bolts, and then there was a bolt holding it in here. This thing will slide right out. And now we can work on cutting the bell housing off. All right, so I'm gonna get cutting this thing. Instructions say to cut it like a sixteenth of an inch behind the second band, but I think I'm going to cut it in front of the band. Uh, the pictures show a huge gap, and I just can't stand that gap that's behind the plate. Uh, I don't really like it, so I'm going to cut it in front of this band, and then we'll see where it goes, and just make sure we get enough of it off. Step two, cut the 350Z, 370Z transmission's bell housing approximately 1 16th or .0625 inches or 1.5 millimeters behind the second casting band that wraps circumferentially, circumferentially around the transmission's bell housing marked by the dotted cut line.
instructions to cut it behind this, but I think it's just so they can guarantee you that you're going to have enough space to get to this spot back here with this plate removed. So if we were to measure this, this plate is actually recessed inside and this part goes uh, where that plate is now. So if we were to measure this, we're at a little over four tenths of an inch. If we were to measure that same four tenths of an inch, you can see that it pretty much lines up where that plate is going to be seated inside of this. So it actually brings this case a little bit closer to the plate so you don't have a big gap because otherwise you'd have like an extra I don't know, half inch gap in there and it kind of looks shitty. So I just took the flat disc and went around the whole thing. Kind of knocked it down a little bit so it's basically flush with the top of this little rib here coming around. Centered on the rib, completely flat all the way around and that should make it look a little nicer. I just got to make sure when I pop this plate off that the thing is fully seated. So like I said, I think they want you to cut it back farther just so you avoid the the error, the possible error of not cutting enough off and it not seating properly and leaking. So we'll just have to make sure we do that. Okay, so step three in the process is to remove the input shaft cover bolts. I already took some of them out. The four at the bottom are gonna have some thread sealant on there because that's where the fluid is so it doesn't leak out. Step three, move the input shaft cover from the 350Z transmission by removing the 11 M8 by 1.25 hex head cap screws. And I will add that these were a 12 millimeter bolt head. And I'm just, I'm just using a welding stand, uh, a welding cart from my old welder. I bought a different cart for both of my welders now. So I got this thing and it's working pretty sweet. So. Take this gasket off, and then we're also going to have to grind this little, this little bolt head off. Step 4. Near the bottom of the exposed area behind the input shaft cover, you will see one small M8 by 125 nut that is tightened onto a long bolt. You must cut this bolt flush with the nut so that nothing sticks out past the end of the nut. And you see as I was starting to get through that it's starting to spit fluid all over so the fluid's actually coming through that bolt that's why there's sealant on those other ones that should be good I don't think I got any junk or too much junk anywhere else kind of look at it and see as we pull this off here we have the initial test fit and just kind of threw it on there and you see how tight this gap is. It's it's still actually kind of big. I think it's a pretty big gap, but that's why I didn't want to cut it way back here, you know, a sixteenth of an inch or whatever past this line, like it says in the directions and instructions, whatever you want to call it. So it's basically wanting you to cut this whole lip off, and then it's another sixteenth of an inch back. So your gap is going to be huge, and I think it looks just terrible, but this doesn't look as bad. I mean, not like you're going to see it anyways, but it's just not as big of a gap. So, test fit looks okay. Just making sure that it's not touching anywhere. All the way around, seated flush. And it'll bolt up nice. Step 5. Clean the Collins Performance adapter plate face with brake parts cleaner. Be careful to avoid spraying the input shaft seal with any brake parts cleaner as the input shaft seal comes pre-lubricated. Now... Place a generous amount of liquid gasket onto the face of the Collins Performance Adapter Plate that mounts to the 350Z transmission, shown here in black. Make sure the liquid gasket is spread out evenly over the outlined surface and any excess liquid and gasket is cleaned off from the inner and outer edges. So I think I'm just going to go smear it over every hole like this and maybe take my chances on the the thread sealant deal. I was going to use some Rector Seal 5. This stuff here, the best thread sealant I've ever used, Rector Seal 5. Um, but I may just do this because if there's enough RTV on the threads as it goes in, if all these holes are covered, it should it should seal just fine. Step six, 
Use the bag of bolts that has 11 M8 by 125 socket head cap screws and fasten the Collins Performance Adapter Plate and Bell Housing to the already cut 350Z transmission. Make sure you apply thread sealant to all of the threads or your transmission will leak gear oil out of the threaded holes. All right guys, here it is. But before we get into this, check out my new light that I got. Oh my jeebus, this is my new camera light. Isn't this thing amazing? Check this out. Dimmer, I'll pull it off. Look at this thing. $10, $10 hairs, and it's white. My other one that I had was like more of a yellow color. So this thing's totally sweet. Schwing! Now let's check this thing out. Very nice. Very, very nice. I like it. All right, so this thing looks pretty cool on here. I'm pretty happy with how this went together. Just about ready to bolt it up onto this thing. That'll be what I'm doing tomorrow. And then we can, I'm gonna take the oil pan off and slide this thing in there and see what we need to do because I'm also gonna be making the entire oil pan. Uh, see, I have a, a section of the oil pan cut already and I'm going to be doing this in a completely separate video so how I'm going to make this but this is what I cut off of a different pan so that's what I'm going to be using flange bolted up to here and then building the front sump so I'm going to be building the whole thing that should be fun so stick around for that and subscribe if you're new share the video if you're not have a good one